I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I got chip my table. All right. All right. Sad news. So not so. Very so. I know. Lolita, beloved killer whale who had been in captivity, has died in Miami Sea Aquarium. What Terrible. are your initial thoughts? It's awful. My initial thought is that Lolita should not have been in that tank in the first place 53 years ago. Whose bright idea was it to be like, hey, let's capture a whale that swims in a majority of our planet and stick it in a bathtub? Horrendous. Yeah. 5,000 pounds had been living in for 52 years, a tank that measures 80 feet by 35 feet and is 20 feet deep. Disgusting. So they've been fighting for years, activists and different people to try to get her out of there. Because I'm not sure how many years back, but she's already been fighting some type of sickness, right? And they've always, they stopped showing her to the public because they're like, oh, she's sick. Mm -hmm. That should have been the indicator, red flag number one. Let's get her out of here. But how many years years later? Yeah. Yeah, come on. And her pod, her mother, who's what, 90 plus years, is still alive on the West Coast. And Mm -hmm. her pod still goes by. And they were trying to rehabilitate her uh, into you know, like getting her used to finding food on her own and then releasing her, but they waited too freaking long. Yeah, that was the idea was they finally got the budget from the Indianapolis Colts owner, Jim Ursay, who decided I'm going to put her on my cargo plane and I will have my people fly her out. They're going to put her in a sanctuary in the Washington Bay in the state and try to teach her to hunt like actually catch fish on her own. Cause obviously 52 years living in a pool, she's been fed every day. So that was the plan. But just to move her from Miami to there said it was going to take two years. What kind of bureaucratic red tape is there to stop you moving a whale? It was going to cost 15 to $20 million. Jim Merce had it with a couple partners and they were just going to do it. But why do we have to wait two years? I don't know. It's, it's really frustrating. It's frustrating because I think, People, you know, I'm not so anti Sea World as a corporation because they do bring awareness and they're educating people and it gets kids excited about the ocean and we get to see animals that we may not get to see. However, cut it out. Like, cut this crap out where you are saving mammals and you're saving marine life. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just call it for what it is. You're profiting on the slavery of these mammals that you're having, giving forced entertainment to people. Like, why are we having dolphins and whales do jumps and stuff? And then we feed them. It's disgusting. It just, I don't know. I can't, I can't get behind zoos and sequariums. I just can't do it. Unless you're legitimately rehabilitating or you're out there doing things and advocating, possibly. But you can't say we're doing this and then doing the opposite and contradicting what you're doing by holding these animals in captivity. And have you ever seen how they actually capture And stress out the whales and the dolphins to get them in captivity. I've seen many videos, but I've never actually watched Blackfish. Blackfish, the cove. It's barbaric what we're doing to these animals. I mean, everywhere. People are doing whaling and people are, you know, killing whales for sport. If we could wake up and see what catastrophic things we are doing to the ocean, it would be devastating. People would not get behind it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you want to go to SeaWorld and support, like, hey, let me show you. We've got this turtle that's stuck in this piece of plastic that's been wrapped around Coca-Cola bottles. Sure, let's make it, let's bring awareness to maybe the pollution, what we're doing in the oceans, as opposed to let me entertain you. Come look at this giant creature trapped in a tank. Because these animals aren't like, it's not a dog and pony show where someone brings their dog to show how smart it is. They both get awards and have a good day and then leave. It's like, no, that these whales are captured either since birth or their birth in the zoos, which they won't admit to half of that. But originally it was all captures off of Mm -hmm. these different areas. And then what aren't they selling them or now they're saying we're not capturing anymore, Mm -hmm. but instead they're purchasing them from other countries Mm -hmm. because they're able to funnel it in that way. Yeah. So they're saying, you know, SeaWorld and a bunch of people have made claims. We're no longer capturing these mammals. Okay, but you're supporting other countries who capture them and you're buying them from them. So don't make it seem like you're doing a good deed over here because you're not. And then, okay, maybe you're not capturing them anymore, but you're breeding, you're forced breeding and artificially inseminating the whales and dolphins that you do have. And now these animals are dying at the age of 6 to 12 to 20 when a whale could live up to 90, 100 plus years in the wild. There's something that we're doing really wrong, not to mention... What is it taking to get the feed there? What kind of food are you feeding them? How are you capturing these bycatch fish? You know, what I just, the whole system is very corrupt to me and I just can't get behind it. And when people say, oh, SeaWorld is doing good, what are they doing? 
show me what they're doing that's good, that's good enough to outweigh what they're doing mm -hmm. for entertainment and to make a profit. I just, I can't get behind. I never was able to get behind it. I think when I was a kid and I watched Free Willy, that was the first thing that I was like, oh my God, I wanted, I wanted to free the whales. I'm sure a lot of people in our generation did. The contradiction is that Free Willy was a trained whale. So when that whale mm -hmm. jumped over the rocks at the end and they're like, it's free, they they grabbed the chain and pulled it back. And then they're like, we need to do another take. And I just kept making it. <laughs> and then Michael Jackson pops out of the ocean. He's like, da -na, da -na 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 -na. Michael Jackson. Great freaking movie. But if you haven't seen Blackfish and you haven't seen The Cove, you've got to see these two documentaries. It will really wake you up into the reality mm -hmm. of what's happening. Yeah, because whaling could be looked at from different ways. Because you could look at a village out in the middle of nowhere where you're seeing people are harpoon catching it by hand on their little canoes. They catch one blue whale or humpback whale and they eat on that for like 12 months sure. for their entire village. Sure. But I can understand. It's a lot different the way we're seeing it, like especially Norway or whaling in Japan mm -hmm. when they harpoon catch them. It's a lot different. And with the dolphins, you know, you stress these animals out, you put them in a cove, you slaughter them, you save the ones that are perfect, quote, perfect, that SeaWorld and other aquariums will purchase. They make a profit, what, a million dollars on each dolphin that looks like flipper? And then they turn around and they slaughter the rest of them. So you capture them, put them in captivity. The ones that aren't perfect, you just destroy them. And then you feed them. to. Get the, I guess the theory in the cove was that they were feeding these dolphins to kids' schools. But now they're, I don't even know if they're doing that. I think they're just slaughtering them and then leaving them. But why? Release them. Just really, I, just, I don't know. It's a very triggering topic for me. I'm very emotional and I, I want to advocate for these mammals. I just can't agree with it. And I it's hard for me to support people who also go to see world. Yeah. I just don't know. It's terrible. We have, we have friends with kids and we totally understand it. So we're not sure. judging them on that aspect. We've been, I've been, we went to SeaWorld once. You know, yeah. I can't. With cousins I can't, and yeah. nephews. I can't say that, you know, I haven't done it. And I went once and I said, I'll never do this again. I cannot get behind it. Yeah. I just remember, or we still to this day, we have friends and neighbors that are like, want to come to the aquarium with us? And then. I'm always like, you know, I'm not going to judge and it'd be cool to go spend the day with you and see your kids have the best day ever. But I'm just like, but my wife is not going <laughs> to fly. Yeah. And I get it. Sometimes kids go and they want to help and they it, it brings this awareness to them where they want to then advocate for the ocean and it creates this thing. With, but take your kids on a wild whale watching adventure. Go out. Mm -hmm. Do do something in the wild. Go snorkeling with dolphins. Like Do something that might not be as convenient but you make a bigger impact. Yep. But, but I'm sure in 20 years, we're going to realize these boats are probably horrible for the way. I mean, who knows? Right. We're always trying to be better. Well, to go into that, where mm -hmm. you're talking about the wild, I took your stepdad and my dad out fishing off our coast here in Destin. And Ed has never been out like that in the ocean. And sure enough, lucky as hell, I point out to the captain, I'm like, yo, yo, turn, turn, turn. We turn around. The, there's a whale shark. Just chilling, cruising, eating. We pull up right next to it for about 10, 15 minutes, get some videos. Ed was blown away. Like, I've never even heard of a whale shark. How cool is that? Maybe a couple hours later on our way out to a different fishing spot, we have dolphins coming towards the boat and they just start riding with us, going in and out. And I said to him right away, I'm like, isn't this way cooler to see in the wild? He's like, well, I'll be damned. I didn't know they did that. Look yeah. at this. They're just right under the boat. They're just like playing with us. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is nature. I've been very lucky, so I I can compare the two, and being in the wild is way better. Yeah, they need speed. They like they they are one of the fastest torpedo mm. creatures in the ocean, and we're sticking them in a tank to be like, here, swim around this tank at 10 miles per hour. And I'm they have different dialect. Yeah. You go to Italy, and it's completely different sounds than they are yeah. off Hawaii, yeah. which is wild. And I understand, too, you know, the thing that I think is frustrating for me and that people will often say about zoos and aquariums is that we are maybe, what's going to happen when they go extinct? We're going to have these animals that we can procreate, but why are they going extinct? Extinct. Let's address the problem without sticking Band-Aids on things. Why are they extinct? Yeah. Maybe there's something that we're doing, like, I don't know, windmills out in the middle of the ocean, the sound of GPS with the military. There are things that we're doing that are stressing out the aquaculture mm -hmm. that is creating these animals to die faster. So let's address the, let's take the money and, and go into research and figure out what we can do to keep these animals from extinction. Yep. Why are we out hunting? I don't there's know. There's just, a, it's such a bigger, there's bigger a new picture. documentary coming out soon, which we shared. And mm -hmm. cause I know Teo did first and it's about the windmills 
out in the ocean, which we've been talking about. My mom even brought it up to us about, you know, everyone thinks if we go clean energy, it's going to be the best for the environment and the planet. There's always a negative to all these things, whether it's the electric car batteries are going to be here for the next 400 years because you can't get rid of them. They're going to be in a land hole, a landfill. The windmills are damaging the whale population now and they're beaching themselves because they can't hear. There's just pounding. There's just, there's so many things. And I, I really look forward to that documentary when Me it comes too. out. I really hope it's done well Let's to where people called. can understand. Cause there's, and just to kind of elaborate a little deeper, whales will communicate to each other through their sonar, right? Whales and dolphins. And so what they do is they let each other know when there are things to look out for, where there's food, they teach their young. And if you're blocking their communication with constant pounding and sounds of sonar and windmills, windmill populate or pollution underwater, you're going to create stress for these animals. That's what they do for the, the dolphins at the cove. They start paddling and banging and they're, they're creating all this sound underwater that stresses the dolphins out that then brings them all into a center and then they just kill them. So, you know, we just have to be better. We have to be, we need more advocates for what's happening in the ocean. You kill, you know, people say you kill the bees, you kill the food, but you kill the whales, you kill the ocean. That's it. But, you know, people, oh, man is not far behind. I'm seeing it here right now. The Hill covered it. Wind turbines linked to whale deaths. New documentary alleges mm -hmm. how the wind industry is behind the imminent extinction of North Atlantic right whales. It's not just it's not just the windmills. It's also military. It's also, mm -hmm. you know, there. I don't know if you've seen those ads on your Instagram. We have these GPS sonar that keep shark away from you. Sure, you're keeping sharks away, but that sound travels underwater mm -hmm. so fast. You're going to start stressing out animals. So stop doing it. My fear is that the whales now that are starting to fight back, I'm sure you've heard the oh, study, Oh, yeah, right? that's the craziest story. Where, where is that happening? I don't, uh, I don't know. Somewhere, it's not in the United States waters, but I think what's happening is these whales are tearing the rudders off of ships and boats, and one of the whales ha is teaching the pods how to fight back. And so one of my fears is now, you know, people are going to start dying or sinking or being lost at sea, and now man's going to have to go and combat these whales. And it's going to be the whale's fault when it's not. What happened is one of those whales were stolen in captivity and now the pod is fighting back against boaters. And it's just, you know, they communicate, they travel, they share their lessons, they share their information. And I just hope that we don't punish whales for tearing up boats. Mm -hmm. It's happening in Spain. Spain. Mm -hmm. Spain, there's another country too. Is it Russia or something? Portugal. It's the is Iberian it? Peninsula. Okay. Yeah. After four years and hundreds of incidents, researchers remain puzzled why orcas, also known as killer whales, continue to ram boats, sinking a few of them along the Iberian Peninsula. So like you were saying, one's teaching them how to do it, mm -hmm. which is nuts. I watched one of the videos. It was like a big, big boat, and it went under in the middle of the night and started ripping at the rudder. And then the boat started taking on water. And the killer whale just kind of leaves after that, like, my job's done. Mm -hmm. So then they had to call. Luckily, they were able to get the Coast Guard out there or whoever would be in Spain and they hopped over and they were saved. But yeah. it's just wild I that know. they could start teaching each other. Like, yo, one of them screwed up one of us. Let's go take down their, their crafts. And it's very, very rare that a killer whale attacks humans, unless obviously the most cases you hear about are at SeaWorld. So it'll be interesting what happens in the next few years with this. Yeah, the researchers say that it's probably from, you know, traumatic incident in the past. Mm -hmm. Or what? Wait, did it? Did it? Cat was it held captive, or did they run over? Did it? Did a boat hit one of the whales? I think sure. a boat hit one of the whales. I can't remember. Something happened though, and now the whales are communicating and teaching others and fighting back. Yeah. The most recent incident occurred on June nineteenth when an orca rammed a seven-ton yacht multiple times off the Shetland Islands in Scotland, according to an account from retired Dutch physicist Dr. Wim Rutten in the Guardian. Mm -hmm. Did you see that one video of the whale where it was trying to mimic and communicate back into English? It was like, it was trying to mimic the human speaking. Mm -hmm. Whales are one of the most intelligent creatures in the water. And the fact that we just go out and sabotage them. We're so ignorant. Humans are just so ignorant. The Iberian orcas, they're the ones doing it to everybody. And I'm not saying, you know, this is obviously I'm very emotional about this topic. I try to be factual and non-emotional, but it's just very frustrating because... I'm not saying that we're any better, you know, what we do to cattle and pork mm -hmm. and chicken and, and mm -hmm. our, and our industry of the way we handle our food, it's, it would be very ignorant for us to point fingers at other countries and how they handle their food and indigenous people when they hunt whales. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. 
What I'm talking about is the inhumane commercialization yes. of doing this yes. for profit, for spectacle, mm-hmm. and just as you say, bycatch, or even if you watch the cove, how they wrangle them all in, they like 10 out of the 200, so they just chop up and leave the rest just bloody in the water. Mm-hmm. Same thing with shark fin soup. That's a big issue. Mm -hmm. You watch those videos, it's horrific. I know people think shark evil, but if you watch this video, it would change your perspective. Chopping off a shark's fin, throwing it back in the water and watching it drown because it can't move. Take the whole shark. Eat it. Eat the whole thing. There's plenty of meat on these things. Or give it to some, turn it into something. Like we're worried about the mercury levels. Well, come on, let's talk about the Mm -hmm. tuna. Talk about the water in the ocean. Japan just announced they're releasing all of that nuclear waste from yeah, Fukushima. I'm just going to let it like, out. Yeah, and they're, it's just, come on, people, stop destroying the ocean. Cut it out. Our coral is dying. Our reefs yeah. are dying. People it's, go out there and bleach. It's a resource. Yes. You know? It's a resource for us. We're definitely ruining it. We'd, that could go on for every part I of the know. world. Like it, Hunting, I know people have weird things about hunting, but hunting has so many regulations in most states from Canada and how they repopulate and how there's certain times... And it's, it's actually like they've done well for themselves on how to appropriately get these deer and elk and things in season. And the ocean seems to have certain regulations, but the big companies and other countries don't. So they just go in and it doesn't even matter if the right fishermen and hunters are out doing it right because they're not the ones we're worried about. They get, they get the uh, most bashing online, like how dare you hunt. When it's like you don't even know what's happening with the big corporations mm-hmm. out there. A great documentary about the ocean is Seaspiracy. Seaspiracy. There was one one part of it. You know, I come. We come from a background of sea of working with seafood. Yeah, this we used is, to be mermaids. <laughs> merman, mermaid. We have it's male. Merman. We have a we have a background of that. I was in the seafood industry for about ten years. So we met at a seafood market. We did. We did. So there are some really great key players who are trying to advance aquaculture with the farmed raised products. And Shout so I, out to Micromine and Strand Foods. Yes, there are really great companies. He's in Scotland. There's a lot in the United States. So when you watch the documentary, if you're going to watch Seaspiracy, just take take the farming with a grain of salt because those parts, I think, if you notice, they don't ever talk about the United States aquaculture. They're Everything about, has an agenda, and I think they wanted to shit on farming pretty hard on that. They did, but it's not in, within the United States. And I'm sure there are other countries that are doing a great job of aquaculture as well. But if you watch it, you notice the United States is nowhere mentioned in the aquaculture industry. However, what we're doing in the oceans is pretty accurate. You know, with mm-hmm. the slavery, people don't talk about that. There's a yeah. huge was slavery. That, was that what we were watching where a guy woke up from getting drunk at a bar mm-hmm. and he was in the middle of the ocean mm-hmm. in Thailand? Thailand is a huge, huge player for slavery. They are kidnapping people and making, they're forcing, um, they're forcing work on ships. They're taking their passports. I mean, that is legit. This was happening in the seafood industry 10 years ago when we were active in it. And it's just coming to the limelight. Yeah. People want to say like, that's not happening here, but we're getting our seafood from them, Mm -hmm. which is keeping them afloat and allowing them to, you know, kidnap, slave, now they're buying, making them rich. We're selling it here. It's, It's just how it works. Your shrimp. Your calamari, a lot of your tilapia, a lot of the other, you know, a lot of the, the shelf, the crab, blue crab, a lot of that stuff that you're getting comes more than likely from a slavery product. It, there's just, it's a very deep hole and they don't talk about it. Luckily we can catch blue crab in the backyard. Yeah. So. But one of the things I want to talk about since we're also on this ocean topic is bluefin tuna. Bluefin. Bluefin. When yeah. you go to restaurants and sushi and you're Wicked eating tuna. Wicked tuna. But we're, we're, it's commercialized and it's the most popular cool thing. Sure. Bluefin tuna. Because you get paid. Those boys get a million bucks for the right fish. Mm-hmm. That's great. A million dollars for one tuna. I can see why it's a profitable industry. However, what they're doing now is called ranching. And that I can't get behind. Mm-hmm. What And for those of you guys who don't know, it's a farmed version. So they're capturing these bluefin tuna, which are the torpedoes of the ocean. They are just as intelligent as a dolphin. Mm-hmm. And they're capturing a tuna at a small size and they're ranching it. They're putting it in a, in a facility and they're growing it to size. They're not as intelligent as a, t- a dolphin. They're pretty close. They wouldn't bite the hook. if They're pretty close. Case. Well, dolphins bite hooks too. No, this is don't. what people don't know. Yes, they do. Dolphins. Stay on topic. Okay. They're not as smart as a dolphin. Sure, they're, they're very no, intelligent and yes. they're very big. They are torpedoes. Yes. 700 pounder will go by your boat without making like a line in the water. Okay. So one of the things with the ranching of these tuna is instead of just catching one, they're catching the entire pod. Mm-hmm. 
And the downfall to catching these pods and then raising them to size in the ranching facilities is that you are wiping out your entire, the entire group. Whereas if you just took one or two, the pod can repopulate, re-educate each other, and then they can continue to grow. But if you take an entire pod of bluefin tuna, they're gone. That's it. So when you say take an entire pod, I have to push back a little. I don't know if you watch fishing or done fishing on how tuna fishing works. talking about the United States. But I'm just saying, unless you have a net that's like 400 yards wide and you're scooping up to see what you can capture in there. Line catching a tuna is so hard. That's why you get paid so well. This is what they're doing. So that's why it's like you get one or two on like a two month push trying Mm -hmm. to get one of these things. They're using drones Mm -hmm. and they're going over and they're finding the pods and they're using this intelligence through the, through the drones. And then the fishermen show up and they net catch the entire pod. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening now. So Asia, Mm -hmm. not just Asia, there are other countries that are doing it. But Japan is probably pretty prominent in that, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Because they have the markets where you can just pick them up. Yeah. And so it's easy to point fingers and say, these countries are doing this, but guess what? We're one of the biggest suppliers. We mm-hmm. purchase mm-hmm. a lot of these bluefin yeah, tuna. Sushi is super popular. But ahi tuna is an awesome alternative. That's not as detrimental. Mm-hmm. There's to... yellowfin, there's blackfin, there's yellowtail. Mm-hmm. There's so many. Mm-hmm. Amberjack, albacore, those aren't the same, but it's still, there are different kinds of tunas. So anyway, to go back on Seaspiracy, what they're claiming is you can't say sustainable seafood. That's a big marketing ploy. Because there's no such thing as sustainable seafood. What their whole agenda is, the only way to be a sustainable seafood company is to not eat the t- to not eat seafood. Mm-hmm. It's also not realistic because people love seafood. Yeah. But we can make better choices and support companies who are actually making better choices. Shout out. No, I'm not going to shout them out. That's right. Shout out. You know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. Shout out to you, you people. So there's a lot of really great advancements that are taking place. We mm-hmm. just have to figure out how to support these fish, how to support fishermen and how to create financial gain to where they can make a livelihood. Yeah. How to prop up the people doing it right mm-hmm. and stop just picking up fish because it's on the shelf. Right. Like a GPS on your nets. You know, one of the biggest plastic polluters in the ocean are fishing nets. Yeah, lines and nets. Mm-hmm. And, and people th- think right away, it's like, oh, it's the boys at the marina go pick it and tell them no more fishing. It's like these guys, they charge nothing to go do charters, you know. It's like, yeah. like you're saying, it's other countries but it's big commercialized Mm -hmm. we don't even see them because they're out in the middle where the nation's waters start crossing you know they're dredging they're net dragging trawling and so some of those things can be really horrific for the Mm -hmm. reef because they're just taking everything and destroying the sea bottom floors yeah scraping it up mm -hmm. but there are new you know people are doing research to create a better net to where it just kind of glides on the bottom without destroying everything but those are expensive so they say so they say and fishermen, you know, it's expensive for them. How do they make a profit? Does it make sense to them? Mm-hmm. You know, you're asking if the government could maybe step in and offer support to the fishermen so that they can go out and do this and still make a profit, it would be better. I would love, we are literally in the hub when it comes to resource. Mm-hmm. We can get some local authorities, some people in the government. We can get fishermen. We'll, we'll have to have somebody on soon. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be great. Break down their perspective from local fishermen to, you know, the rules and regulations that the oceans are holding on them. Yeah. And now with plastic, the pollution. Did you see that they've got like 11 tons? It's probably not even correct. It's probably like 11,000 tons or something. You're talking plastic. about pulling out of the garbage patch? Uh-huh. And they're creating now these buoy systems, these barricades and rivers in Guatemala that are stopping the plastic when it when they're having these like big ranch or big downfall, water, mm-hmm. water downfall, rain. Storms. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Just trying to stop it before the plastic. That way we can bring it to land, put it in the garbage, and then we'll bring it right back up. (laughs) But if we can stop the pollution before it reaches the ocean, that would be huge. And so there are a lot of really great people. So I don't mean to just sit here and give terrible, depressing news because there are things you can do. People can go out and clean up the oceans, clean your beach, you know, minimize your your single. Minimize, Look for your local cleanups. Yeah. Minimize your single use plastic. I mean, you can mm. even go down, you don't have to be at the ocean. You can walk down a, a street in your town and pick up trash. Yeah. Let's just start with that. Start with you. Don't be lazy. Mm-hmm. We lived in Miami and saw it all over the place. It's just walk. Every time you see something, if you have a garbage bag or you see a grocery bag, pick it up, fill it up, pick things up. My mom does it now every day they walk, her and my dad. It's like we were living in Miami, we did beach cleanups. 
These garbage cans overfill because the city doesn't have the resources to get them dumped in time. Or there are no trash cans. How many how many mm-hmm. times did we go on walks and we were like, there's not a single trash can mm-hmm. so to we be would, found. So we would carry our trash we picked up for like two miles yeah. until we saw something. And then we'll see a garbage can, we'll put it in the garbage and it's in the neighborhood and the guy will be like, oh, it's my garbage can. Don't oh, put recycle. that in there. I'm you like, in the uh, run. Yeah. But you don't even have to bring a bag with you when you're walking. Just no. grab, grab a grocery bag. I'm more than likely you'll see you five to up. 10 on your walk. Mm. But get out, do some exercise, bring your kids, make it an educational thing, teach them about it. You know, we need to just start, we need to stop saying it's somebody else's responsibility and we need to take ownership in it ourselves. Because guess what? It may not be your plastic bag that you threw out the window, but you went to the grocery store and got a plastic bag. You're getting single use plastic water bottles, Coca-Cola bottles, beer cans. You're using these single use items. So you're just as responsible because even though you're maybe throwing it in the trash or in the recycling, where does it go from there? Yeah. Stop turtles from doing cocaine. You know, just don't use plastic straws. Turtles. You also have the bears doing cocaine. That's right. Cocaine bears. (laughs) Well, either way, it's very easy to pick up trash and just start with that. You might feel like you're not making a dent, but you're at least helping the intentions there. Pick it up, clean up your community. It helps. And if you, if you see it, pick it up. That was Teo's thing, right? What Mm. was Teo? Teo was a really wonderful guy that we met in Miami. He still is. He's not gone. Yeah, he still... Teo is a wonderful guy that we met in Miami. And he was advocating for beach cleanups and, you know, saving the reefs Mm -hmm. and saving the... Selling shirts that are made out of like recyclable material and glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's awesome. He had a whole thing. But we'll put his Instagram here. He's wonderful. We did a full feature on him. So you can watch a little video about him. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. And he goes to Costa Rica and, you know, does a lot of advocating for sea life out there and just a really great guy. Well, today was a short one, but Steph's very passionate about the ocean and the sea life, mammals, animals, people, everything, just being okay in this world. So Lolita passed, which was sad, and she wanted to touch base on this. Mm-hmm. Let's come put a wrap on it today. Thank you for listening to the TED Talk on this and for creating... It's a TED Talk? Yeah. I've never been on a TED Talk. You're on a TED Talk now. It's a conversational TED Talk. All right. Till next time. RIP, Lolita. Stay focused.